whenever there's regime changes in the National Football League, uh, there's always an airing out of dirty laundry and airing out of grievances. Uh, Players, coaches, execs don't have to hold their tongue anymore because, yeah, the the previous bosses are gone and they can say things. And it's football festivus. It's good times, man. And the Vikings were no different. Eric Hendricks and Brian O'Neill, two team leaders, had uh, end-of-season press conferences on Monday. They had some thoughts. They said some things, and especially some more things if you read between the lines. Woo! First up, Eric Kendricks, Chris Thompson, Pioneer Press, go. Uh, Vikings linebacker Eric Kendricks, I'm moving forward. Quote, I think just having that voice, no matter how big your role is, is important to listen up and take each other's feelings into account. I don't think a fear-based organization is the way to go. End quote. So obviously he's inferring that the Zimmer regime, the Spielman regime, was a fear-based organization. And yeah, people have been piling on Kendricks and O'Neill for being like, oh, they're just a bunch of soft millennials. But it's true. And I've said this a bunch. Do not compare the National Football League jobs to your regular job, especially when it comes down to salary. But when it comes to organizations and dealing with people and uh, personal interactions, it, it is the same, right? So think about your job. Do you do better when you're treated like a human being, uh, like your uh, your opinion is important? You actually have a say in what's going on. You have dignity or as opposed to you're just an oxen that they just beat. It's like, hey, keep pulling the wagon or we're going to get a different oxen to pull the wagon. No, it's no. So you could say it's soft. You could say it's whatever. But no, this is younger generations are definitely more empathetic. They definitely have a higher EQ than old school generations. That's why Zimmer and some of the younger players, they definitely butted heads at times. And I think that there was a lot going um, going on underneath the surface that was covered up by winning. 2017 was a big time season. But once you start losing, yeah. And we say on here that winning is a clone that covers up a lot of stink. And now that stink is starting to get exposed, man. And it smells like Axe Body Spray and B.O. And like Five Alive. Do they still make that anymore? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, then uh, Chad Graff, or excuse me, Andrew Kramer, Pioneer Press. Andrew Kramer, Star Tribune, nailed it. Uh, followed up. Uh, the fear-based stuff Kendrick's re- reference can be as little as Zim, Mad, Clint Kubiak, Dare told reporters they need to get Justin Jefferson the ball more. He grind on past losses in April meetings. Kendrick's, a seventh-year All-Pro, says he wants someone he can just talk to. And yeah, Zimmer has tried to rule with the iron fist. He tried it with Norv. He tried it with JDF. He, he, and he, one of the reasons why Clint Kubiak got the job, besides nepotism, was that Zimmer saw that Clint Kubiak was an OC that he could control, that he could put his thumb down. Hey, run, run, pass, run, run, pass. Hey, you have this job because of me. So we're, we're some very interesting stuff is, is leaking now. So obviously Kramer wouldn't run with this unless it's backed up by a number of sources. And yeah, the fact that you know, Clint Kubiak said something that's extremely obvious to all fans, to anyone with, uh, with two brain cells, oh, we need to get the ball to Justin Jefferson because he's the best player on offense and we need to get the passing game going. And then Zimmer just crushing him. Yeah. I mean, just... There's a lot. There's a lot to unpack here. And Kendricks, he got very emotional in his press conference talking about Anthony Barr. Anthony Barr you know, was Zimmer's first draft pick, but they obviously didn't see eye to eye all the time. And I, there's a lot of things that players were upset about with Zimmer. And a lot of it comes down to what can be seen as old school toughness and especially with injuries. And you saw Eric Kendricks dealt with injuries these past few years, Anthony Barr, Daniil Hunter. And you know, the old school mentality is, Hey, rub some dirt on it. Are you hurt or are you injured? Because everybody hurts sometimes. And there's a a difference, but no, I mean, young, I mean, players, they see, they see, they understand, they know their bodies better than anyone. Anthony Barr's even talked about this uh, when he's come back from his knee injury this year too. And getting guys out on the field before they're ready because you're trying to win a game. No, obviously the players want to win too, but the players understand that, Hey, if I have a setback or if I'm taking the spot of someone, if, if I'm at 60%, someone else is at 90%, they're better than me at 60%. I, that would hurt the team. And just, just, just we, small little hints, small little clues. Like when Daniil Hunter had the hernia disc in his neck and Mike Zimmer was saying, oh, it's just a tweak. 
So Zimmer is relaying to the media and to the fans that your star player, oh, he doesn't have a herniated disc. His neck isn't all jacked up. Oh, it's just a tweak. He should be fine. Oh, he slept on it funny. That's bad messaging because then when fans in the media don't see Daniil Hunter practicing, they don't see him uh, in um, in uh, preseason games. They don't see him re ready for the season. They, they Oh, it's just a tweak. I heard it's just a tweak. Right? So... Yeah, that was one of the the larger frustrations for me with Zimmer is throwing players under the bus with injuries. It's like that's not going to make him heal faster. I, I don't get it. And I, I think that potentially could lead to Daniel Hunter leaving because you know, there's still some things in place there. Uh, then Ben Gessling, the big buzzword from the Vikings has been collaboration. Ask Brian O'Neill what he means by that. Quote, it can be as little as, hey. How you doing in the hallway? We spent so much time together and the season's so long that little personal things can make a huge difference. And yeah, this is why people are piling on O'Neal. It's like, oh, you're soft. You're getting paid all this money to play a kid's game. Blah, 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 blah. But yeah, they're still human beings. And think about your work. Like just having these small personal relationships and uh, this whole cliche. Every time that there's a, uh, well, it, I was going to say sports teams, but it applies to businesses too. Like, hey, here at, uh, Kinsella Motors, we're family. Here at the Minnesota Vikings, we're family, right? And do family not talk to each other? Actually, that's a bad example. Because <laughs> sometimes family don't talk to each other. But, hey, if you're in front of the cameras and you're saying all this rah-rah BS, is like, hey, I love you guys. Hey, I always got your back. And then your actions don't sync up with your words in front of the camera. I mean, people see through that. I mean, these players aren't dumb. I just... Yeah. O'Neal continued, guys play their best when they feel good about themselves and their role within a team. The more we can cultivate a culture like that, uh, culture that guys feel good about being themselves and that they're important to the team, I, I think it would go a long way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is, this is simply morale. And morale can be high if you're winning. Like, you can be an aloof, Napoleonic a-hole when you're winning, a la Belichick. But when you're not... Going to have issues, man. And I think that's why, just just going macro on this thing, like when the Vikings would get punched in the mouth in a game and it would get tight late and then they wouldn't have confidence in Mike Zimmer and things just seemed to fall apart. It, it, se it seemed like a, God, what, what's the word? Uh, pro no, projection, fait accompli, or... I, I, I can't think of the word exactly. Uh, it's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't quite get it. Like, they're manifesting their fate or you know whatever but uh and also when you know the vikings lost a couple games in a row and then things just start to quick sand because and when things when they just hit a little bit of adversity they understand oh here we go again or when they have double digit leads and then they blow it's like, oh here we go again that comes down to morale it, it, it does you need to have a team and a resil uh, that is resilient a team that does not give up a team that will always fight for their coach where you look at detroit they didn't win a lot of games. They beat the Vikings, but they won a handful of games down the stretch because they continued to fight and because they love Dan Campbell. And, yeah, he's a caricature. He's a uh, whatever. He's biting kneecaps. But guess what? He has got their backs forever. Like he, he does. Mike Zimmer, he had that at the beginning. I don't know what happened, but it seemed to have gone away. Yeah. Uh, and then lastly, lastly, uh, Andrew Kramer Strib nailed it. Uh, speaks to what the Vikings haven't had internally, not even just about Zimmer, who was the face of it, but leadership throughout. A player once said Spielman walked around like he was the caricature of Billy Bean in Moneyball, and he was the personable one. <laughs> so like I said, Kramer wouldn't run with this unless it was backed up by several sources. So this is just amazing that all of the dirty laundry is just going to air it out. Uh, so Billy Bean, Brad Pitt, Moneyball movie, uh, uh, Brad Pitt, in the movie, he would walk around. He would not be too personal with players because he knew that he would have to cut them or trade them or, or whatever. And Spielman, I mean, maybe he did the same, right? And the fact that he was the personal one, I mean, that could say a lot about Mike Zimmer. So, also, going back to this. So, Eric Kendricks having these thoughts about, you know, not wanting a fear-based organization – and this is a man who is a team leader. This is a man who has been a, a veteran. He's been an all pro. He's been a pro bowler. And he, and he feels this way as one of the most important players on the team. How do you think 
the bottom of the roster guys feel. How do you think the practice squad feels? I think that just adds up to a very sullen, low morale locker room. And that's why the Vikings haven't been competitive in the last two years, despite, on paper, having as much talent as anyone in the league. But, yeah, it's time for a new beginning, and it's very interesting that we're just starting to see behind the curtain a little bit, behind the kimono. And, uh, yeah, Kendricks and O'Neal airing things out. You're going to see a lot more of this, by the way. And not even guys putting their name on it. I think that you're going to see a lot more anonymous sources coming out. It's going to be players. It's going to be coaches. It's going to be execs. It's going to be everyone. Everyone's come, Everyone's got an axe to grind. So, again, take everything with a little grain of salt. But, man, drama. Drama. Uh, but your thoughts are thoughts. Brian O'Neill and Eric Kendricks have some thoughts. On the previous regime, let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But until next time, Skull Production Value.